The promising news, according to this group of scientists and epidemiologists, is that community transmission of COVID-19 may have peaked, but they are warning that virus-related hospitalizations are likely to keep going up for some time. And also, just because you've recovered doesn't mean you're now in the clear. There are new stats suggesting the threat of long COVID is very real. Joining us now to dissect the new information, Dr. Fahad Razak, he's an internist at St. Mike's Hospital and an assistant director of the Science Advisory Table. Carrie Bowman, a professor of bioethics and global health at the University of Toronto. And Dr. Kwajo Karamente, in critical care and palliative physician at the Ottawa Hospital. Thanks to all three of you for making time for CP24 on the eve of a long weekend. Dr. Razak, let's start with you as a member of the Science Advisory Table. The headline today, it is good news. That's what people are going to see. Walk us through some of the details that you're also hoping they take into consideration as we head into this long weekend. Yeah, I appreciate that the headline is going to be that we may have plateaued. But honestly, I think the most important headline is that we are still in the midst of an extreme surge. Even at today's values based on wastewater, we would be looking at something like 100,000 new infections per day in the province. That's extraordinarily high. And so the first important message for anyone going into a family gathering this weekend or a gathering with friends is that you have to worry that the person in the room with you, especially if you're indoors, could potentially be infectious and take appropriate precautions. And that means all the things we've always talked about, things like vaccination, wearing masks, not coming if you have symptoms, using things like rapid tests. Now, the second point is potentially the presence of a plateau in the wastewater. Honestly, we don't know. We've been looking the last couple of days where this potential change in the trajectory emerged. It's very uncertain. Wastewater science is a brand new science with COVID. It's very uncertain where this is going. Could it be a plateau and head further up? Could it be a plateau and be heading down? We're not sure. Probably we'll know a lot more in the next week. But because of that, I think especially we need to be cautious. And whatever happens, the lingering effect, people going to get sicker based on current infections, ending up in hospital, ending up in the ICU, that's already baked in. And we want to reduce the burden of that as much as possible. Certainly the prediction from the science advisory table is we could essentially double our hospitalizations. We're sitting just under 1,400 today. The prediction is we could be at 3,000 COVID patients in hospital uh, by the end of next month. Uh, Dr. Karamenting, uh, wastewater in Ottawa, that seems to be one of the regions where it has not crested when you look at cases. In fact, the trend is still going in an upwards trajectory. What's going on in your community and how are you coping? Yeah, thanks for the question, Beatrice. I mean, first of all, in terms of coping, I think one of the main concerns is staffing. You know, since there's such high community spread and with the uh, prolonged um, uh, isolation period for healthcare providers, it, it's challenging to staff the units. But so far, locally, we're, we're keeping up. Uh, locally, when it comes to COVID admissions and, and patients admitted with like because of COVID, luckily we're at low numbers. You know, I, uh, you know, in the city we have very few patients on ventilators related to a COVID nineteen infection, and it really says a lot about the vaccine efforts throughout our, our region. Ottawa Public Health has been tremendous at at uh, you know informing the public. Uh, we've uh, also had uh, from the uh, Omicron wave uh, high levels of hybrid immunity, which. You know, based on the most recent New England Journal article showing that that's quite effective at preventing infection. And, uh, you know, as we heard earlier in the week, therapeutics as, such as Paxlovid being available for those that are high risk, uh, continued masking, especially for those that are high risk. Like we're, we're, we're so far in, in an OK spot, but, you know, it's, it's tough to predict the predict these things. It's, it's tough to, you know, let your guard down completely. But so far from what we're seeing locally, uh, it, it, we're, we're, we're coping. So you're managing slowly but surely. And I'm glad you brought up masking. Carrie, I want to put this question to you. As we do head into the long weekend, the premier today said, if you're having 15 people inside at your house, put on a mask. That's not really feasible when you're sitting down to a dinner with your closest family and friends. Is the messaging kind of getting lost this week, masking encouraged but not mandatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the messaging is profoundly difficult under these conditions. Uh, as we've heard very clearly, I mean, there's ambiguity woven right into this data, Will. You know, that, that, that's tough enough. But, you know, exactly as you say, if you're sitting at the table for whatever festival or, you know, celebration you're having over this weekend, 
what? You can't have 15 people eating a meal with their masks on. So how's that going to work? And and the other thing that, that kind of concerns me is, is, you know, I speak as an ethicist, which I am. So the, the message of personal responsibility, it kind of makes it sound like that's about me and that's about you. But, you know, we have obligations to the community as well, and we want to get this under control. So, yes, it's very hard to give clear messages with ambiguity, but, but 15 people with a mask on eating a meal doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't see how that's going to work. Unpack that for me a little bit more, Carrie. When you say personal responsibility uh, and maybe putting the onus too much on people to, to make that choice, what would be, I guess, a, a clearer way to communicate the best message possible for public health for everyone? Yeah. That it's not just about you or me or my grandfather or an immunocompromised child. Uh, all of those things matter a lot, by the way. I'm not suggesting that. But it's also about the well-being for all of us as a community. And I'm not suggesting mandatory. You know, in a mature democratic society, you really don't want a lot of constant mandatory rules. But having said that, there's a lot of ethical reasons why all of us should be careful, even if we're not particularly worried about my health, my children's health, my father's health. Not the point, you know, we're, we're a community. And I think, you know, the fact that the personal responsibility thing is, is, is so strong, it never really gets unpacked as to what that means and how we should responsibly act with that. Dr. Razak, you mentioned about 100,000 cases is where we are right now. Are you concerned that people are maybe getting disenchanted with that number? Like, oh, it's just 100,000. It could be worse. Yeah, I, I do worry that, and I, and I think Dr. Bowman raised some really important points as well, which is that we need to look at this as a number. So 100,000 people in Ontario, that's an enormous number, meaning that if you're in any gathering, 15 people would make me blanch to be indoor at a gathering of 15 people right now, that you have to worry about someone in that room with you potentially being infectious. And our immunity and our protection, it's been remarkable what the vaccines have done. But a lot of the dysfunction we're seeing right now, so the issues that Dr. Cameron Tang raised in Ottawa, we're seeing that in Toronto as well. We're having trouble keeping our hospitals staffed. And if you think about a common resource right now, the common resource for COVID-19 treatment, but for everything else, for the car accident, for the heart attack, it is these hospitals, these shared hospitals. We are having trouble staffing them. That's been the point of discussion for many of our meetings. So. The fact that we have structural availability in this province, ICU beds, ventilators, you need the people to run them. And that is where part of the danger is here. The other is the susceptibility part. So look, I as an individual, when I wear a mask, I protect myself, but importantly, I protect those around me as well. In a room, if everyone's wearing a mask, everyone derives more protection than what you would get if just you try and protect yourself. That is the collective action potential here. Dr. Kermenting, I want to ask you about long COVID. This is something that we're starting to see more and more being discussed in recent weeks now that more people, I think it was what's potentially up to 6 million Ontarians infected with COVID-19 just since December. The science table today saying it's being associated with neurologic illness, heart attack, stroke, long-term impairment. What are you seeing and what are you most concerned about in the long run? Yeah, I, I just, for me, uh, Beatrice, I, I think we need uh, more um, clear, stringent definitions. What is long COVID? What's a clear d diagnosis? Uh, we need continued follow-up to, to, you know, as we progress through the pandemic and as it goes in, gets into end end in this, mis endemicity. So uh, this is something that needs to be evaluated uh, further. You know, like when we when we we see the potential impacts you know whether it's fatigue whether it's chronic shortness of breath like i think we need that clear uh definition because I, I to me as a clinician it's pretty vague i'm not clear on exactly how we define long COVID. um but you know fortunately i'll, I'll continue to look on the bright side that you know with the the efforts that we're making with the vaccination rates with well, uh, the state we've been in with uh, hybrid immunity, with the availability of therapeutics, we still have to look at a way of how we can live with COVID. I think this is sometimes a message that's being lost because COVID is not going anywhere, you know, and uh, so we really need to think about how we're going to manage future variants, how we're going to maintain hospital staff, maintain uh, capacity, uh, but in a way that's sustainable and, and, uh, it's, and, and in my opinion, a focus on interventions less and less on restrictions.
Yeah, this just sounds like it's going to be a long game for all of us as well. Dr. Razak, Carrie Bowman, Dr. Karamenteng, thanks to all three of you for your time and for your insights tonight.